I think this workshop has come at an opportune time, at a time Ghana is going through a whole lot of upheavals, especially within the environment circles. We have all kinds of environmental degradation, but I think what is crowning it all is the illegal mining activities locally known as Galamsi, which has wide implications with wide dimensions that we can hardly handle as a country. And it borders on the livelihoods of people, it borders on natural resources management, it affects the health of people, it affects our general well-being as a people. It is huge. But it is also an issue that journalists are hardly reporting on. In fact, there is reportage. But I personally think that the reportage is just scratching the surface of things. Now, with this workshop, even though um, it wouldn't cover all media houses per se, and it's just a number of selected people that have been brought here, I think the import of it is that people are being made aware that there is a way we can report highlighting the scientific issues that will enable us to make the needed linkages for the wider public to understand that we need to set up. We need to address issues. Unless we set up and address issues the way they ought to be addressed, we are doomed. Because once your water resources are gone, forget it. At the moment, from the water, Ghana Water Company, about four treatment plants have been closed down, have been shut. They can no longer perform because where they are tapping their water from, it's all polluted. Seriously and highly polluted. Which means that people in those areas are no longer going to get pipeline water. And if we are looking at the um, SDGs and the import of it, it means that Ghana, even though um, the MDGs, the UN commended Ghana, for attaining the, one of the targets, which is making water accessible to half, at least half of the population. We exceeded that. But now with what is happening, it is going to erode the gains of what we have made under the MDGs. So we need to sit up. And it, one aspect, one way of awakening the society to their responsibilities is through media reportage. And that is why I am going in for advocacy journalism. Advocacy in the sense, not in a negative way, but taking up the issues and making our members aware, community members aware, that these are things that we need to tackle so that our lives will become better than it is now. I think it is an excellent mixture that we have scientists, researchers, communication officers, journalists. Because there is a kind of um, symbiotic relationship amongst these um, three. Scientists, by their training, I would say, are very introspective. I mean, they, they like keeping things to themselves. But then, the ultimate goal of science is not meant for them, nor for their funding organizations. The ultimate aim of science is to get to the ordinary, bigger society. And this has to be communicated to them. Results, scientific results have to be communicated to the ordinary people. But scientists cannot do that. Scientists love talking in their own language, big, often clumsy for us. And we really don't understand. Somebody needs to translate that for the ordinary person to hear. Now, I believe that is why they have um, communication offices. But even at times, we don't want to hear from the communication offices. We want the scientists themselves to talk. So then there is a need for the establishment of a relationship between the scientists and the media people or the journalists. But how do we do this? I believe that this um, workshop is affording us the opportunity to learn how to relate to each other and establish you know, a synergistic um, a kind of relationship where we can easily fall on journalists, um, um, where journalists can easily fall on scientists for information, where scientists will also have the confidence to talk to journalists. Because I believe that at certain points, 
scientists are afraid because all the time they deal with uncertainties. They are unearthing new information. They are afraid that they are, their research is not actually ended and now journalists want to get information from that. That is not all about it. When journalists go to scientists, they just want a kind of confirmation about something that is happening. And I think that with what we have learned here, we are going to begin. It's going to be a new beginning for a wonderful relationship between scientists and journalists and of course also highlighting the role of the communication officers.